Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, I'm a big fan of Netflix. I, I have been ever since I first got the service. I remember when I was told, hey, did you know you can rent movies from the internet and they send you the DVD, you keep it as long as you want, and then you get a new one sent to you as soon as you send the other one back? I'm all like, no, but that's amazing. I'm gonna do this and then rip everything. Totally kidding. Totally joking. Piracy is bad. Anyway. As soon as Netflix allowed you to start streaming it to your home, I was on board and I've never looked back. Not at all. And I probably never will. You have me for life, you big red end bastard. But the point is, one of the questions that comes up now is whether or not Netflix should take a cue from HBO and other series and stop with the binge culture. In fact, CBC or CNBC penned this article here titled Netflix should take a cue from Game of Thrones and ditch the binge watching of new shows. And it's an interesting question, isn't it? It's one that is very fascinating if you start really kind of breaking it down, because I think a lot of you just based upon asking that original question are going to think to yourself, no, no, no. If I have to start waiting, I'm just going to leave the platform. There's going to be people who say that, but here's the thing. Let's look at Game of Thrones season premiere numbers. Okay. So the season premiere of Game of Thrones pulled in a staggering 17.4 million viewers. Now those ratings, we have absolutely no way of knowing how many people actually watched because a lot of it's based upon like you know, who, who knows how many eyeballs were in the house watching it during the season premiere, but what they were able to track was 17.4 million and roughly the same amount of number of people pirated the episode as well, putting it well near 40 million people watching this, the first episode of season eight of game of Thrones. Now, last weekend's episode, the bells, the, the penultimate episode, again, it sets a new ratings record with 18.4 million people having watched. And again, roughly about the same amount of people binge watched it. So then the question becomes, is Netflix in, should they start doing this sort of thing? as a way to bolster ratings, to keep the water cooler conversation going. And it's interesting because I'm both torn for it and against it. And I, and I say this for a couple different reasons. Okay. For one, let's talk about binging culture as a whole. Netflix invented binging culture and people love it as a result of that. There's nothing cooler then, then, you know, having them, let's say, bring back season four of Lucifer after you watch seasons one, two, and three on, I believe it was Fox and you waited week after week after week to watch it and you got into the show, but then they go, here's season four, all episodes at once. And you're like, oh, oh yeah. Oh my God. All at once. It's great. It works in some, it works in some instances, my O face aside, it works in some instances, but at the same time, you kind of anticipate the week to week. You anticipate the waiting for it and the waiting builds up that anticipation. Imagine if HBO would have dropped all six episodes of Game of Thrones season eight at once. People would have been done with it in a night. I know I would have. I would have gone to my dad's house. We would have put on some freaking Depends, gotten our Snuggies and just watched the hell out of it. And it would have been a great father-son bonding experience. But then it would be over. And that's kind of one of the big problems that people are, are kind of not looking forward to with tomorrow night is that it would be over. It is over tomorrow night. So, but on Netflix, when you look at it from that perspective, it could be over already. So we come at it from a couple of different ways and there's no wrong way to consume the, the, the type of content. There's no wrong way to consume it. It's at your leisure, at your speed. However, again, to go back to the way that network television has kind of created this problem because the binge watching culture is entirely network television and cable television's fault. And I'm not saying that because of the week to week wait for more content. Look, you got seven days out of the week and there's usually something to watch every one of those days. And people will intrinsically figure out their own schedule for what they want to watch. And they have no problem waiting because the next night is something new. It keeps us on a bit of a schedule. It keeps us in a bit of a habit. And the problem comes when you have unfinished storylines or sudden cancellations or the unfinished storylines from sudden cancellations. And I have spoken about this before, and I will continue to speak of this until networks realize and Netflix realizes that you do not want to do your customers dirty like that. After decades of having shows come and go without proper resolutions, people have become cynical and jaded. They have, when you give them a show that they like and they want to watch it and they get emotionally invested into it for four seasons or so, and then 
well, the ratings weren't that good this year, so let's just ax it. People then are left with this emotional hole in their lives. And, and that's fine. That's fine that we feel those way towards those characters. And the problem with it is, is that it makes it harder for us to trust what comes next. It's kind of like a battered wife syndrome. If you want my honest opinion, most people who watch network television are big victims of the battered wife syndrome because you get constantly beat. But then it's like, no, nah, baby, baby, come here. I love you. Let me give you, let me buy you a new dress. Let me, let me, let me give you a new pair of shoes. You're, you're totally fine. Let me, let me get you that Xbox you like. Let me, let me get you, get you that game you like. You know what I mean? That's how they treat you because they know you'll keep coming back so they can keep doing it. So then here comes Netflix and Netflix comes out and says, Hey, all of it at once. You want that? Yeah, you want that? You want it all at once? But you, oh, but oh, you want all thirteen episodes at once? Ooh, how deep you want it? That's again, kind of being a little bit jokey in the sexual part of it. But it feels like that when they come out and they give you everything you want all at once, and they go, "We're going to give you another season." Ooh, you know, it makes you go, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." So you, you you feel better about about binging everything, and then it's over, and you're like, "Well, then now what do I watch? Oh, what's the next bingeable show?" Then we get into a situation where there's a lot of gluttony involved with that. There's a lot of gluttony and it comes in with this. I want to watch it all now. And we don't take the time to appreciate what it is. We just want it, want it, want it. It's, it's, it's two sides of the same coin, both with their extremes that are bad. So maybe Netflix should explore the concept of not putting everything out all at once, doing it week to week as and now. And I'll tell you my personal thoughts on this as a person who reviews content, it is so difficult for me to binge watch a Netflix show and get a review out at a decent time. So much so that I opt out of even doing it many times because I don't have the time. I don't have the time even during the week to sit there and watch all the shows I want to watch. And a lot of, and then I, but then I'll wait for a couple of episodes to pile up and I binge through them. So it's, it's a problem that many and many of us face. Those of us who like to consume the content because we like it, which is like 98% of what I watch. And then those of us who want to review it and want to be able to review it in an, in in a, in, in, a, in a decent amount of time, get kind of screwed on that one. And that's me. That's the selfish point. I will fully admit that that's not the company's fault. That's just kind of how things are with me in my own personal life. But then that question does come up when it comes to ratings, should Netflix entertain this concept? Now, when it came to the show, you, which went to Netflix, I think it died on, it was, it was on another channel or it was on lifetime or something. And then it died over there and it came over to Netflix and Netflix touted it out as one of the most stream shows, one of the most binge watch shows and gave out this number. Uh, it was one of the executives at Fox looked at that and was like, well, that's really not that many people. That's really not that many people watch it, especially if you break down 13 episodes per season and you just kind of do the numbers. It's not all 40 million people watching. It's that many people have watched the show. So then you have to start doing the numbers and breaking it down. And Netflix kind of falls apart when you put it under a spotlight in regards to its ratings, because they never really share that data with anyone. But when they do, you kind of can do the general math and maybe get an idea, a rough estimate for what it all, what all happens with it. So that's the big problem here is they don't have as many people watching one show as you might like to think. Whereas a show like Game of Thrones does and week after week, you can see how many people actually watch it. So maybe, and I know the article arguing against binge cultures is not looking at it the same way I am. Um, but perhaps it might be time for some shows to go week to week and not everything be binge worthy. But at the same time, I'm an impatient asshole. So it's like, you know, if I'm watching Netflix, I kind of want to see as much of it as I can. I want to go through it. And I know it's going to be there for me. You know, I know it's going to be there. I know all of it's going to be there. I can get to it when I'm done. You know, I still haven't finished the last half of season four of Kimmy Schmidt yet. You know, like, because that kind of came and went three, four months ago. No one ever talked about it. That's, again, another problem with Netflix for another day. How they market things is entirely out there. But still, do you think Netflix should, in fact, do away with binge culture or start trying to find a way to curb binge culture uh, or do you think everything's fine the way that it is? I really want to know what you think. Please let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Please thumbs up the video while you're here. Subscribe. Check me out on Patreon. Have yourself a great day and peace out.